Hi everyone, welcome to my channel if you're new here. Welcome back to my channel if you're a returning viewer subscriber. In today's video, I'm going to be filming a very exciting video. It's me a vlog where I read The Ballad of Songs and Snakes by Susan Collins. I'm so excited for this book. I am such a Hunger Games girly. I was when the books and films first came out, and I still am. So I'm incredibly excited to be picking up the Hunger Games prequel, this book right here. So I received this book for my birthday in 2020. I've put off reading it for a very long time. It's actually incredible that the film is coming out very, very soon because it means I have a very big excuse to read this book right now. Let's just stop procrastinating it so much. So I thought it'd be fun to film a reading vlog of this book, tell you how I feel about it. I think I'm gonna do spoiler free. I'll put it in the title and on the screen, whatever I decide to do. I'll give you a little taste of what this book is like before we all rush off the cinemas to watch the film. This is a side note, but look how gorgeous this naked card cover is. Incredible. I have the rest of the series in paperback, but I do love having this stunning book. If you need a little bit of a refresher on Hunger Games books, I did a video a couple of years ago where I reread the first Hunger Games book the first time in nine years. It was a time. I'll have the video linked up below and up above, but I also kind of don't want you to watch it because I'm in tears like 24 seven in that video. And it's because A, it was my time of the month, which is great. And second of all, I was having a very, very stressful time completing my first year of university from home because it filmed it over the 2020 lockdown and it was a lot. So yeah, 2020, the year rings a bell because yes, I was reading that book in preparation for this book. And it's taken me three years to pick this one up. So here we are, we're finally doing the thing, we're gonna read this book. So I thought, first of all, we would read the little synopsis and we can run through what the book is about before we get going. It is the morning of the reaping that will kick off the 10th annual Hunger Games. In the capital, 18 year old Cor 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 Coriolanus Snow. I need to Google how to pronounce that. In the capital, 18 year old Snow is preparing for his one shot at glory as a mentor in the games. The once mighty house of Snow has fallen on hard times. Its fate hanging on the center chance that he will be able to outcharm, outwit, and outmaneuver his fellow students to mentor the winning tribute. The odds are against him. Iconic line. He's been given the humiliating assignment of mentoring the female tribute from District 12, the lowest of the low. Their fates are now completely intertwined. Every choice he makes could lead to favor or failure, triumph or ruin. Inside the arena, it will be a fight to the death. Outside the arena, Snow starts to feel for his doomed tribute and must weigh his need to follow the rules against his desire to survive no matter what it takes. So I believe this is like a villain origin story for Snow, who is the president of the games in the Hoggy Games we're all familiar with. It's a long book, it's chunky. So I wanted to get this video started now so that we can kind of get going with it. And yeah, I would probably pop in every kind of like 50 or 100 pages, let you know how I'm finding the book. But yeah, let the B-roll commence. Hope you enjoy the video. This is my original Hunger Games trilogy. These are all the copies that I read from. Actually, my English teacher gave me my copy of the Hunger Games, which is kind of crazy. She gave it to all of us and it was the most wonderful thing. As you can tell, Catching Fire has been through something. But yeah, I loved them all. They were amazing. This and the Twilight series were it for me. on page 114 of The Battle of Song with Snakes, which means, according to Goodreads, I'm 22% of the way through the book, so just over a fifth. I know my math is quite incredible, isn't it? I have some thoughts. I haven't been updating you, although I did say I'd speak to you every kind of 50 to 100 pages. I want to say more like in between comments before doing some big update, but I obviously didn't do that. So we're here at 100 pages, which is still over to give you my thoughts. Is this okay here? Whatever, okay, we'll just look at that. So far, like I think overall, I'm enjoying the read. It has been a couple of years since I reread The Hunger Games, so I'm not sure those is feeling the exact same way, but obviously it's the same author and you'd think that she had the same writing style because I don't think she's done anything in between. So this is kind of crazy. We got this book so many years later. So in this book, Snow is, I'm just gonna call him Snow because I don't know how to pronounce the name. But in this book, Snow is um, a student, maybe he's in high school, 
he is in his final year of something. If he manages to get a scholarship or whatever, he can afford to go to university because his family, they're not very well off after the war, the whole thing that sparks the idea of the Hunger Games. But I love in this book how we're seeing the students and the teachers ideas and how they kind of got interpreted into aspects of the game. You could definitely read this book without knowledge of the Hunger Games, without having read the books or watched the films or whatever, but there's so many little easter eggs in this that if you are familiar with the concept already you can understand in a better way and like pick up on and things make more sense through that I think. Snow is not full-blown villain yet but there are parts of him that are a little bit kind of sus and I'm like kind of hate that. You just see it kind of peek through the way he makes his decisions, how he like conducts himself and his thought pattern is just a little bit off which I'm really enjoying because it's showing that his evilness that's my word, is actually like more nature than it is nurture, which is cool. Because I thought this would just be like, he's been through some stuff, he fell in love with this girl and like we have to feel sorry for him. And that's the reason why he became a villain. But actually no, he already was like on that path and then some other things happened to make it go worse for him, you know? We also get backgrounds, his personal life, his family. He's an orphan, but he lives with his grandma and his cousin. Because obviously in the Hunger Games, he's obsessed with white roses. And you see how roses remind him of his mother, who I think was killed or she's passed away. The white rose is his own personal thing, but you see like the introduction of that, which is really cool. What else do I have to say? This is something I'm really noticing, is it's so cool that dystopians can make comments on current society. I think it's amazing. And it's not something I picked up as much in the Hunger Games original trilogy, which is partly because I was young when I read them, but also having done the reread, like I was old enough to have picked up on things like that. And there were not as many kind of mirrors to society. But in this book, there's so many things about like the way that the capital are, like the citizens of the capital, the way they just think that the people who live in the districts are just complete scum. Like, other than the people who were present during the rebellion, they have no real backing for that, but they just go along with the idea of the same as everyone else. And they have this fear for districts as though they're not even people you know like they're like some lesser creature and it's such a reflection of how some people tragically view others in the real world and i think it's really cool seeing that explored through a dystopian you know this book is more insightful and educational than i probably thought it was going to be so the tribute that snow gets is the girl from district 12 which obviously mirrors katniss because she was a girl from district 12 wasn't she when my cat is in zoomy mode and he really wants me to go play with him. Should I show you? Winnie? You wanna play? You wanna play, sweet one? Okay, slightly different angle, so I felt like switching up a little bit. His district candidate, the person who's gonna be in the Hunger Games, who he's kind of mentoring, is this girl called Lucy Gray. Her whole thing is that she sings, which is great, you know, we love to see it. It's kind of cool in a way because it mirrors like Katniss's whole are you, are you coming to the tree? <laughs> that thing. Strange things are happening, no stranger could it be. Did anyone else get absolute chills in the second film? When Cass sings that and then like the down burst, like that scene, a cornerstone in my mind. Anyways, um, the problem is though, is that I hate, I, ha I truly hate singing in books. We're not hearing it obviously, but the lyrics are written out and you so you have to read the, all the lyrics like on the page and just the idea of that and also the lyrics are kind of cringe themselves i'm just like struggling so basically i skim i'm trying to find that i can't even find any lyrics here we go whole page of them here and they crop up kind of frequently whenever we have anything to do with lucy not a fan just one thing that's like a main problem there are so many dramatic cliffhangers every single chapter currently has ended on some huge cliffhanger i'm talking like someone dying or some massive something happening i don't know some of the pacing i feel like is a little bit slow and then suddenly there'll be a cliffhanger and you just like have to read on which is really good writing i like that a lot especially in a longer book i don't have too many tabs as of yet i've got four i've got two for disgust and two for shock there were a lot of those in my reread of the hunger games as well but i'm not complaining about the lack of tabs in this time i don't think that's a reflection of like the story being not good. I'd love some like very good quote or some moment that was very... Like I said so far, I feel like the pacing has been all right. Although I feel like where I'm at, I want to see some things start to happen because we have had a lot of progress. Tributes have been brought into the capital. Some things have gone down. It's all been a bit dramatic and I see why they're there. But I just do think that 
this book is quite long and we need to get going because we need to have the um, interviews with the tributes on TV and then we need to have the actual Hunger Games and I want the actual games to be like a good part of this book because I want to see how Snow kind of like manages Lucy through it and also what that whole situation is going to look like because I know for a fact it's going to be different from the other books because they're obviously set many years into the future. Also, this is just like a me thing again, but like for some reason I picture this book as being set in like <laughs> the 1800s, which is so stupid because this world is like our world, but like deep into the future. I keep thinking, oh, they had really cool technology in the original trilogy. Reading this book, you know, there basically won't be anything like that. And then when they started talking about like interviews on live television, I was like, oh wait, this is set in the future <laughs> from my own reality. That's it, those are my thoughts that was kind of Confusing, I feel but I'm gonna go read the book so far so good I'm enjoying I'm reading Ninth House by Leo Dugo at the same time I feel like once I finish that one then I can fully focus on this book and when I'm reading Ninth House even though that was getting really good I feel like I am really excited to pick this one up those are my thoughts I'll be back I'll probably the 200 page update or actually I think part one of this book is gonna end before then when is that when does part two start yeah part two is page 157 so I will maybe drop in there if something dramatics happen maybe the games will start i'll keep you updated but this is a long talking clip so i will leave you in peace for a second lighting is so bad i wanted to be backlit because i didn't think it mattered but actually i think it does all right friends welcome to my 200 page update except it's actually my 253 page update because 255 even i do not know where i got the three from um, because I have over read basically. I really want to get this video done, uh, aka this book done, because I've been reading it for so long and it's irritating me. But I'm gonna put those negative vibes aside and I will tell you honestly about how I'm feeling about the Battle of Summers. The Battle of. Can we not be throwing my camera on the floor, please? The Ballad of Summers and Snakes. We're wonky, but who cares? I mean, you probably do, but I'm sorry. Okay. What the heck? I hate this. I literally can't get a good angle anywhere in my room because it's winter. The lighting, my dudes. I can't be having it. I can't be dealing with that. I was in a really good mood and now suddenly I'm angry. Nothing has happened to cause this, so I don't know what's happening with me. I have written down how I've been feeling throughout the book, so I can actually give you my updates. I wrote down thoughts from like page 180 and like 210 and stuff like that, so we can actually talk about them. The pacing. There is a bit of a pacing problem. We are halfway through the book and the games have only just begun. A little bit concerning, a little bit worrying. Don't totally love that. I get why we needed like a bit of build up, show the attachment between the characters and establish like who Snow is the person. But oh my goodness, this book is long. <laughs> I think we could have shaved off like 50 to 100 pages and the book would still be doing just as well which is not fabulous but whatever that is like the main criticism that people have the pacing is off and then it's something at the end of the last kind of 50 pages things go crazy and it actually really picks up which is a bit of a mess but this girl had a lot to say okay this is like a bit of an argument that is i, I so see why suzanne collins did this but we basically kill off like a good chunk of the tributes before the games even begin so you can pay attention to the tributes much later in the book when the games finally begin i do get that but it was a bit silly the fact that we had like 24 tributes or whatever and going into the games we've got like 13 and i was like <laughs> just every single opportunity they were just dropping like flies so that we could have a reduced cast of characters you know for the reader's sake it just felt like it was it was like a little bit it's easier to digest when really the reader should just be able to understand whatever is being shown because you know we kept up with the 24 in the original game so why can't we do it in this book too what else do i have to say we're starting to see a lot more of snow being a snake and i think it is very obvious like the bits we are shown is like a big criticism i have with the book is that there are a lot of references to games as we know them um in this first book i don't think everything needs to be like explained in this specific timeline in order to back up like everything from the future series i think actually okay having some things be a little bit open-ended because we can kind of just assume that they happened in a past timeline before the original Hunger games trilogy they didn't all need to happen within the time frame of this book but again i do have to remind myself that this is ya like as brutal as it is and as gruesome as some of the deaths and things are this is still why the fact that we're being kind of like fed some information points is like a little bit more understandable when you consider the age range that this book is actually aimed at i was actually thinking i don't think this needed to be ya because the people who read the hunger games when they came out have all grown up and were now all adults susan collins could have made this adult really learnt into like the gruesome factors and like the psychological 
philosophical elements of the story because that's what I really do find interesting. These characters are dealing with the initial like first few games because this is the 10th annual Hunger Games and things are still fresh and there's still this like there's still humanity within the people of the capital which I think is a really interesting feature and could have been more deeply more thoroughly explored had this book been adult. That's that's other than that. I think I have one more point to say. <laughs> this is really funny and it's not a criticism of the book, it's just something that I picked up on. There's like a little romance right between Snow and our main girl, what's she even called? By the way I'm saying Snow because I literally can't say Coriol Coriolanus, that, that name is in there. Um, why don't I know her name? Lucy Gray. Okay. The romance is so icky. It happens too quickly and which is like where did that come from? That then he is like a kid and so is she so it just kind of does make sense of it. The other thing is that I have to keep reminding myself that the ickiness in the relationship is not like Susan Collins having made a mistake. Like that is deliberate. Like we're meant to be seeing how Snow is a little bit too controlling of her and a little bit too, although a lot too, self-centered. He sees his relationship with her, his love for her, only because she brings him something. She brings him attention, she brings him stardom, she brings him a like, clout. And so whenever I'm reading like a line where Snow's being icky, I'm like, oh my gosh, I hate this. But then I'm reminded like that's the point, we're meant to be seeing that he's gross. I keep on, I keep wanting to like stop and be like, hold up, this is horrible. And I'm like, yeah, we get it. We are all aware of that because that is the entire point of the relationship between them. Okay, that's it. Those are my thoughts for now. Thoughts at page 255. So I am 49% of the way through the book. Like I said, the games have just got going, so I'm excited to finally see like what happens there. Some crazy things have already happened within the first like a little bit of that. I'm excited to continue with the book. I do think I'm spending too long on it, and I think that is probably affecting my enjoyment of it a little bit, but I do want to read further, obviously, and see how things go. I've listened to the audiobook as I physically read the book. I have to kind of like set aside time to do that, be having the book physically so I can be annotating it as I go. That's your update. I do want to kind of get it finished before the end of the week. I think that'd be kind of a good goal to set myself. Although I'm in the middle of like a thousand books right now. I do want to get this video up. I literally wanted to get it up like a month ago. I obviously couldn't for like reasons other than me not wanting to pick up the book. But now that my reason for being slow about getting this video out is because I'm being slow about picking up the book and because I think my enjoyment is being tainted by the fact that I am not finishing the book quicker means I really should pick up the pace. It would be good if Susan Collins picked up the pace too because it's slow. Also, if you know anyone about the singing in the shower, I hope you enjoyed that. This was my tripod, by the way. This is what it's come to. It's not moved while the phone began dripping from his chin. He suggested a tale that could only end in tragedy. Star-crossed lovers meeting their fate. A revenge story turned in on itself. A war saga that took no prisoners. A drone carrying a bottle of water flew into the arena. And Lucy Gray lifted her face to track its wobbly progress. Her tongue flicked across her lips as if in anticipation. And the water cooling out of the cracked bottle sent him into a state of heightened agitation. She, in turn, began to climb even higher. The water. A word surfaced in his brain. A word from the poster that had papered the capital for a time. Hydrophobia. <laughs> massive lamp in front of me but i did want to give you an update in the ballad of some of the snakes my fringe is gonna go it's gonna have to go which does in fact mean that i look like a bit of a wreck but i simply must speak to you because this is my 300 page with a 300 page update someone tell me why i am somehow on like how i'm somehow on page 369 of this book I genuinely thought I was much closer to the 300 page mark, but I'm actually closer to the 400 page mark. Um, anyway, I do have some updates for you. So the first thing I want to say is that I'm very much more, I'm very much more, I'm very much enjoying the book more. I mean, enjoying the book more. Things have just happened. We've had the entire Hunger Games. Something that does surprise me a little bit is that the Hunger Games event within this book is genuinely between like 12 and 15% of the entire book, which is such a small percentage. So we've done that already, and I've got this big chunk left of the book. I've got like another quarter to go, or just over a quarter, something like that. I don't know what's gonna happen. Like there was a plot twist, which came out of nowhere. That's gonna have to take up all of this. It also is kind of turning into a relationship drama because Snow's obviously in love with Lucy Gray. Lucy Gray has a lover from her past. He's just shown up. Interesting. We still need to see his great downfall though, because right now he's doing, he was doing pretty badly and now he's doing fine. I had one more thing to mention that I forgot to mention earlier. The more like vulnerable Snow gets, the more likeable he gets. And right now he's the most vulnerable he's been throughout the entire book. I just feel like... Suzanne Collins has engineered it so that we become 
more attached to him the further we go throughout the book. There are also like are obvious red flags within his personality. I just, I feel like by the end of the book, it's gonna be an annoying reason why he becomes mean. <laughs> He's literally evil, but you know, mean works as well. I wanna get this book done within the next couple of days. I don't wanna spend any longer than like another like one or two days reading it. Which thing I could do, because I think I've got about what, three hours left of the audiobook, which is not very much at all. I mean, like three hours of two times speed, which is what I'm listening to it on. I wish on YouTube audiobooks that you could listen faster than two times, because it's a little bit too slow for me. I'm crazy. I'm one of those people who watch this every single YouTube video on two times speed. And people tell me to slow down my speech, but when I'm editing a video, I'm like, girl, hurry up. I'm gonna go to bed. So there are genuinely like a million things wrong with this clip right now but i wanted to give you my thoughts on the ballad of songs and snakes because i just think that it's time we did the outro i've been reading this book for so long and i finally finished it it's taken me over a month but that point aside i thought that i would run through some final feelings about the book first things first this book is so long and it just didn't need to be that long it didn't need to be any longer maybe it needed to be like 50 pages longer than the biggest book in the original trilogy but like 520 pages is just insane aside from that the plot is quite meandering and i think that's because miss susan collins just went a bit crazy in terms of like just being able to do whatever she wants and i think that comes partly with the fact that she is like an absolutely like million copper million copper million copy best-selling author scholastic i know her publisher is in the us which is like you can do what you want which i understand but at the same time i think that there needs to be like a little bit more kind of like interference in like cutting down how much she wrote because even though i'm a big fan of the original series and i'll lap up anything she wrote it just dragged a little bit which means like i said that the plot is a little bit meandering not in a way of like things keep changing in like big like shock reveals but it just doesn't feel refined or like polished off enough i don't know what, i don't know what i'm trying to say here but it's just like i don't know i just i just I basically just overall think it could have been a lot shorter. Okay, next point. I've read a review where someone was like, it's much kind of goofier than the original trilogy, which is so true. Like the language feels actually more colloquial and more juvenile than the original trilogy, which I just think is a complete wrong direction. Because I think I've said this already, but like, I think this book could have been an adult book. Obviously the original readership have like grown up and are now adults, even though they were young adults when they read the first trilogy. So I think that it would have made sense had this book been like aged up a bit when actually the way it read seemed like aged down. I think when you're writing a prequel after the series, it's possible to put in too many references to the original series. That was definitely a problem within this book. It makes sense that these things that we see in the original trilogy had like roots in the past, but all of their roots being found in this one event that happened in the 10th games is just like, I just think it's a bit unrealistic really. And again, she's treating her audience like they're still teenagers when actually we're all adults. Like I don't know of many teenagers who are picking up this book. The major readership of this book is for people who are around my age. Was this book needed? No. Was this a cash grab? I also don't think so either. I would say this book reads kind of like fan service. It wasn't necessary for Susan Collins to be adding onto this empire. Like she has so much money from it already. Like there's no, there's no need. It really didn't feel like that. And it also felt like the things that we were told, it was useful information, but it was not kind of necessary information about the history of the games and like how they came about and everything like that. I also read a quote in a Goodreads review where someone was like, unpacking more of Panem's history was an ambitious idea on Colin's part. And I think it could have been done well 
maybe as part of a collection of novellas and I fully agree with that too. We wouldn't have had that problem with, with every single thing being explained in the past in this like one specific event. We could have had the novellas like spaced across different years throughout the games or even like before the games even began. Particularly maybe within the Snow's lineage if she particularly wanted to be writing about Coriolanus's past and his history. So there we go, that is The Ballad of Swords and Snakes. I've rated this book a three stars. I'm not sure whether it's a 3.5 or whether it's a three. I'm kind of torn because I think I did have like an overall positive experience, but I think that there were moments when I was like, I just want this to be done. Which is partly because I dragged out the reading experience so much. Partly because I was vlogging, I had the pressure of that to get it done. I'm definitely kind of disappointed with this read because the original trilogy were a five star read to me and even on the reread, the first book was a five star read. She kind of lost the magic of the original trilogy through this book. And honestly, I cringed at the references to like the Katniss plant and things like that that were just kind of like a little bit too on the nose. So for now, a three stars, but we'll see what I do with the rating in the future. There you go, that's it. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please make sure you give it a thumbs up. Let me know how you found it. I think this video is gonna be a little bit all over the place. I didn't really unfold the way I wish it had. And it's because I missed the date of the film coming out. I also, in general, took too long to read the book, but I hope you enjoyed it nevertheless. And I'll see you in a couple of days for another video. Bye-bye.